Wilson. I'm the Executive Director of Theatre Museum Canada. Uh, and I'd like to thank you very much for being part of our studio audience for this part of our Theatre Museum Goes Backstage panel event. Um, Theatre Museum Canada is an interesting place to work these days, I find. It's kind of fun because we get to plan for the future, because someday we do want to have a home of our own. Uh, but also, we're busy now. Uh, whether it's with our online home at www.theatermuseumcanada.ca, where we're working on uh, our oral history project with R.H. Thompson, uh, and also where this panel will be becoming part of our digital archives. Uh, we've got our small growing collection. We've had a number of exhibits uh, in the past, whether it's at the library, Harborfront. Last year we had a small one down at the CNE. Um, so things like that that are keeping us busy, and also uh, events like this. Our uh, Theatre Museum Goes Backstage series of panels. But what we're trying to do is take a look at some of the people and issues behind uh, Canada's performing arts. And we're not just interested in the past, but we're also very much interested in the future. Uh, and that's what today we're coming together to talk about, uh, to a certain extent, the audiences of the future. So I'm just going to quickly, uh, I won't introduce, but I'll let you know who these people are on our panel, because uh, you do have the information in the uh, biography, and then that way our conversation can get started a little quicker. But I'll just identify, so this is Catherine Hernandez, who's the writer who did, uh, um, with Fujian, who did uh, Sing Kill. We have Franco Bonney from the Theatre Centre, John Karastomatis from Mervish Productions, David Craig, uh, who started off Theatre David Craig, or Theatre Direct Canada, and is now with Roseneath. We have Donna and Yvette from uh, Native Earth. So I'll turn the tables over to them, and uh, thanks very much for coming out. Um, when we started talking about doing this panel, uh, Mike asked us if we, if we would be willing to moderate, which we are always happy to do, and we, because we decided this year that we were going to be compelling, engaging, and vital, which means no boring <laughs> panels, which means we're going to be asking you to participate in this, which is why we got rid of the tables when we came in, because we wanted to get rid of that barrier. Um, we work very much in a circle at Native Earth, which is why we wanted this to feel kind of like a circle. Because if we're talking about the audience and this relationship, then, um, then I think we need to get rid of the things that are keeping us apart. I do want to tell you what it is we ask people to think about before, so you're on the same page as us. When we sent out our questions, um, it was just to sort of give our panelists an idea of where we wanted to go in this discussion. And there's going to be very much a, more of a discussion than a, and now I talk for 20 minutes about what my theater does, and now David talks for 20 minutes about what his theater does. Uh, we, sent, we asked our panelists to be prepared to, um, to talk about a play that they, that they found themselves surprised to be attending. To, uh, to talk about someone that they were surprised to see at one of their own shows, to talk about an occasion when uh, a message uh, in outreach or in marketing or on the stage was for you personally, when you recognized that this was directed at you. An occasion where you didn't get it, but the rest of the audience seemed to, and I guess conversely, we could talk about when I get something so much and everyone else seems like to be in a different show than me. Um, whether theme nights, and Donna's example was Sweeney Todd Psychotic Hair Care Professionals Night. Um, Is that real? Is that real? You made that up. It's coming. <laughs> okay. uh, develop or divide audiences. So that idea of outreach, outreach work that reaches into a certain group and whether that whether that actually develops your audience or whether that just brings in a one-time only thing. I want to talk about event, the event nature of theater too. Let's not forget that. And the last major shift in audience that we can recall and how did we manage it? Did we? And how are we going to manage the next one? Um, you know, like what did we learn from the last time there was that kind of a shift in audience? That's it. That's what we're going to talk about. Uh, that's kind of the framework for it because you know who we are and as we go through people will talk about either the shows that that are in the communities that they're working from like the like Catherine works with Fujian and Carlos Bolosan and right now she's doing cross currents work and she works at Native Earth um, Franco works with uh, all kinds of artists through his work at the theater center and we co-presented co this year a bit 
John, who brings a completely different thing to the table, I want him to talk about identity a bit, as well as Adventures of a Black Girl, as well as The Kink in My Hair, because Mervish is doing a lot in terms of that bringing a different audience to a different theater. David, who works in theater for young audiences, which is, we think, where, where this all starts, and me and Donna. And so Donna wants to talk now because she, she asked if she could go first. I'm going to ask Donna to talk. I actually, um, so I'll apologize in advance. I asked to go first so I can get a, a personal side note out of the way. Um, I just wanted to really quickly talk to this guy who's not in this seat here. Um, I, just, I just wanted to, so, I'm sorry guys, and I'll, I'll, I'll come back on focus in a second. It's just, um, I want to talk to audience, because um, things are, you know what, it, it's not working, and, um, you, no, 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 don't, you know what, you've changed, <laughs> okay, let's not, You've changed. Maybe I've changed too. Okay, I've changed too. You've changed. It's all over your face. Um, and I want to know what happened between us. Um, so I'm really sorry to ambush you, but it's kind of an intervention. Um, you know, and you'll get the chance to, you know, tell us what you have to say for yourself as well, but I'm ready to talk about this. So I just want to thank you for being or not being here. Thank you. David. <laughs> I know, she's always a tough no, act to I, follow. I, I wanted to say to the same person, I think you've changed too. Tell him. And, uh, and uh, 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 I want to know, I want to know why. Uh, but, um, but that, I, you know, uh, for me, it, uh, that question of audience becomes, uh, for me, it's, it's, there's, there's uh, adult audiences that pay tickets to go to theaters. And then there's children who are um, uh, uh, basically gifted theater. They're brought to the theater. The theater is brought to them. Uh, they have an experience of theater, which is um, that it's largely it's out of their control. Uh, by the time a kid gets to a certain age, uh, they're making their, their own entertainment decisions. And um, a theater may or may not be a part of that. Uh, so I have two very different ideas of what an audience is in my, in my mind. Most of my work is with theater for young audiences, and um, point of order, Madam Speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I, you call me Madam. Should I, <laughs> should I address the questions that you've proposed, or should I just be free flow about this? Feel free. Free flow. Feel free. Well, we, um, it, uh, at Rosemead Theatre where I am, we decided about five years ago to try and, uh, and reach the largest possible audience that we could, that we could possibly reach. And we did that by, by uh, uh, really focusing on touring, uh, both nationally and internationally. So our audience has grown from... Uh, you know, 20,000 to 40,000 to 60,000 to 80,000 to 100,000 people. And we're doing that largely uh, by cobbling together funny money from different sources, um, but not being, uh, you know, not that. You've got 100,000, just give it, 100,000 is. is the, the Lorraine Kimza Theater for Young People performs to 80,000. The Shaw Festival performs to 175,000. And we have a budget of about $700,000 to do that on. We don't see any limit to the audience we can attract. No, we, we, we really feel that the audience is there. Now, the other flip side, and the, uh, this is the person I'm speaking to, is, is that I, I feel and this is a very uh, personal choice because I'm also a theater goer uh, of adult theater. I create a little bit of adult theater, but I, I go to theater and I have seen in my lifetime the prestige of uh, creation theater in Canada diminish in my lifetime. And uh, uh, it used to be, I, I felt when I started off, and maybe it's just because I was young, that everything was so exciting. 
Like they would announce the season at Tarragon and it would be like everybody was talking about the plays on at Tarragon. Oh my God, they're going to do this and this. And we went to the plays and the plays were exciting and the plays spoke to us and the plays were thrilling. And, uh, and, and even when they weren't thrilling, they were thrilling. <laughs> and there were two events that were significant to me. One was when the Chalmers family stopped giving money to playwrights and playwrights lost $150,000 a year in, in subsidy from that family, and most recently when the Laidlaw Foundation decided that they were no longer going to give um, about $800,000 a year to the development of performing arts, live performing arts in Ontario. They were like an arts council all unto themselves, and they just packed their bags and walked away. And I think that's a crisis that's worth discussing. And at the same time, uh, 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 you know, we've seen the rise in my lifetime of the commercial theatre, which has been terrifically successful and has drawn a whole crowd of people downtown to see plays and is, and is really prospering. You've had your ups and downs, SARS being the down, but really a, a, an industry has been created here. But it's, it's the creation theater, which I'm so personally um, invested in, that I've seen the struggle with. I think Soul Pepper has been a huge success. Why is Soul Pepper a success? Why have audiences turned away from the Canadian play in favor of Pinter and, uh, and uh, the English playwrights and traditional uh, modern American playwrights? So when I think about audiences, those are, that's a snapshot of where I am. I see no limit to the number of kids I can reach if only people would think my audience was as valuable as an adult audience, which if there was any honor in the world, they would, but there isn't. And then I see the creation theater houses, such as this, uh, which is struggling. I, I can have so many memories of being in this theater, seeing startling, wonderful plays. And, and so are your, is, it's like, I, you know, I go, okay, so you're, you're seeing 100,000 young people a year seeing your work, and are they growing up and buying a ticket to the theater center or to Fujian or to Mervish? Like, what's happening between those, the time that they're seeing your stuff and the time that this guy is not here? Not that we're giving such a great show, but I had a show on last week. It was really good. I liked it a lot. So did the 20 people who came to see it. <laughs> Gentlemen, Franco. Go next. Maybe John. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, Catherine, maybe you can fill in a, yeah. the gap between Thanks. Rosemeath and adult audiences by talking about some of your experiences with the teenage audiences. Yeah, I just I found it uh, very odd. I mean, first off, let's just back up. When I, I was hired at uh, Factory Theatre because, um, and it was really funny because the posting was, it said, we're looking for somebody to help create diversity in our audiences. <laughs> and I remember that when we were all going in for the job interview, like, um, what would you do? And they didn't really, it wasn't like, this is the job and this is how you're going to do it. We're looking for somebody who has ideas. Anybody, anybody have any <laughs> ideas? And um, I just remember approaching the job thinking, okay, I really do not want to telemarket. <laughs> I don't want to call people up and say, hey, you want to come see our show? You want to come? And so what I had done is I had created an education and outreach